This is Colin again with Blocksmith XR. Today we're going to be taking part in the uh, third challenge in our challenge series, which is to create a uh, fungi scavenger hunt or mushroom uh, exploration scene, something like that, where you just can explore a natural uh, valley or kind of little peaceful location and just kind of hunt for some mushrooms that you can uh, pick up and explore. So uh, here we go. I'm back in the builder. I'm going to start a blank scene for this project and I'll just build up the uh, kind of natural location first. So I think I'm going to try and use just a valley um, using some of those objects that I used last week for my aquarium challenge and those I can find in right in here. Um, instead of, you know, trying to make this look, you know, like an underwater scene, I'm going to do a, uh, you know, like I said, just kind of like a nice peaceful forested valley that's, you know, pretty relaxing to walk through and I'll see if I can even maybe um, gamify this a little bit. So each you know, mushroom that you find uh, will actually count up to a uh, greater score variable where you can keep track of all the mushrooms and maybe it even shows you know, how many mushrooms are left, that kind of thing. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, get rid of my grid again. You know, I'm not using um, that to build any buildings or any you know, you know, precise details. So I'm gonna remove the grid and start making my landscape. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to use a some of my hills again for my landscape. I like those for you know an area to walk on just because they you know look a little bit different. You have some hills in there, and it's not all just flat. So there's going to be one of my hills. I'm going to make that one kind of tall, and I'll put a grass texture on this. So I'm in my terrain tab. Click on grass. And if you remember from one of my uh, for earlier streams, sometimes you need to uh, adjust the zoom settings over here for your materials, because that's some very large blades of grass right now. So I'll adjust that so it looks like it's kind of, yeah, uh, looks a little bit better and I don't have those, those huge pieces of grass anymore. All right, uh, let's throw a different hill. Once again, you know, variation is awesome in a scene because it, you're not just looking at the same, you know, repeated shapes over and over again, or, you know, same repeated materials. So I'll stretch this one out. Um, probably would be about the same size, but I want to apply um, a slightly different material. Let's see if I have any other grass. So I have this uh, grass here. That's the one that I used on my first shape. Um, but I also have a grass with flowers and that one looks pretty good, but that may be a little too big once again. So I'm actually going to do a smaller hill over here with that material on it where you can kind of, you know, maybe just like a little grassy meadow with some flowers. And then I'll put another, uh, another one of these uh, just normal grass materials. So just, you know, creating some variation in my scene. I'm going to click this little plus button to save that material so I don't have to readjust my zoom levels and that kind of thing. So same grass color, or excuse me, same grass material, but I will change the color a little bit. Once again, get a little bit of variation in my scene. And now I'm actually going to try and do something else. I'm going to use an object that I haven't shown you guys before, which is a pit. So I'm going to snap this over here and kind of create this uh, little pit, which I'll lower and you can't really tell it's uh, indented right now, but let me add on a new material. And I'm just going to stay in this terrain area for the most part, I think. Uh, oh, maybe not. I'm going to actually search for, see if there's any gravel. Perfect. And that will probably give you an idea. I don't want to do a gravel pit. Instead, I want to try and do a little pond. And there we go. I'll raise that up just a little bit so I don't have that uh, kind of same little gap over there. And change around. Actually, you know, this is going to be kind of a mountainous area, like a little valley. So I'm going to do, you know, some kind of like river rock in there. You know, I don't want it to be really fine gravel. Um, I want to do, yeah, just a little like kind of river rock pond. And there we go. I'll add the water in later, but I'll just keep on, you know, kind of adding some hills in here and create a little, you know, kind of a narrow valley for my player to explore. All right, that looks pretty good. 
I'll adjust the height on some of these so I have that variation going on again. So just, yeah, if you look from the side now, I just kind of have a series of little rolling hills, you know, nice, you know, peaceful area for my player to explore. And I'll probably, you know, fill some of those uh, crevices in there with some trees or rocks or other of those objects just to, you know, kind of add that nice natural um, location. All right, so I'm gonna toss in really quick um, water so you can see that this isn't just gonna be a gravel pit. And I'll use, Hmm. I'll try, I'll see what a cube looks like. And if the cube doesn't work, then I can just replace it with something else. All right, let's stretch that across. And now apply that water material. Cool. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I don't really have to worry about these sides because I'm gonna put a series of cliffs um, right, right along that edge. Um, same with over here, maybe a mountain or two. Um, to give it that that feeling of a valley. And kind of same story right over here. You know, I can see that it's overlapping a little bit, but I'll put some rocks and stuff in there to, uh, to kind of cover that up. Uh, okay, so first thing I want to do is I just want to explore what I have so far and just make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's uh, easy to move around. I'm not getting stuck anywhere that I can kind of walk in my um, or at least along the edge of my pond without any issues. So I'm gonna click on play again, and I'm gonna play the viewer to uh, jump in my player's uh, shoes or go into first person mode. All right, so this is what I have so far. This is my little valley area. And I think that, that uh, lake looks pretty cool. Um, but like I said, I think I do need some rocks right along the edge there. And that'll be a perfect place, those rocks to hide um, some of the things for my challenge, which are those fungi or some mushrooms. And then I can also put some, you know, mushrooms um, maybe along the edges where my cliffs are going to be, or I don't know, who knows? Let's see what it, uh, it's going to look like. So let's finish kind of completing this valley area. And to do that, I'm just going to use some cliffs. These are similar to what I used last week for my aquarium challenge. Uh, if you haven't seen that one yet, uh, definitely check it out. I remade a great tide pool. Um, and you know, put some fish swimming around in it and put some all you know other types of uh, sea creatures so you can just kind of explore you know the inside of a great tide pool and get the feeling of being underwater. I really like that one. Uh, so I'm actually gonna use something a little bit different. Um, instead of this, this uh, rock flint material like I used last week, I'm gonna explore my terrain tab, uh, actually rock tab and See if there's a different type of rock that I can use. There we go, stone. And that gives it, you know, once again, just kind of a different feeling. And I like that because it kind of looks, you know, like I have, a, you know, some layers in my rock, like it's kind of like a sedimentary, you know, rock right there. One thing I want to avoid for sure is my player being able to climb up these rocks because, you know, then they could just jump over on this side, uh, which would not turn out well. So I just want to make sure that they, uh, yeah, they can't climb up those rocks. I'm going to move those down a little bit. And to, to do that, it looks like they wouldn't be able to. Maybe a really determined player could jump from like ledge to ledge. But if I use this handle right here and drag it in, it just makes it a little bit more vertical, you know, just harder to climb. So I'll reposition those so they're right at my edge. And uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good for there. Um, for this side, instead of the cliffs, I'm going to use just like a series of boulders, kind of like a, a landfall had come, come down through here and fell on my little meadow here. There we go. Um, I could use some different rocks for some variation, so I'll do that. I'll use rock number six. And once again, you know, if you just kind of put some rotations, you know, different colors maybe, on some of these things, then they just look, uh, your scene just looks much better in the end because you just have a lot more, you know, interesting detail and you can clearly, or you, you know, you won't be able to tell that it's uh, clearly repeated, um, which I, you know, I don't really like seeing that in game when I can just see, clearly see like a, you know, the same material and, you know, all the exact, you know, on the, the rocks or something. All right, that's a pretty good area. I don't think the player would be able to uh, climb around that. I'll just make that a little bit 
Ooh, there's even almost like a little cave going on in there. I think that would be a great hiding spot for some mushrooms. And I'll change this one to be a little bit darker. And let's flip this around a little bit to be, yeah, just a little bit uh, more vertical so the player can't climb up that. All right, like I said, I do want this to have the feeling of a valley though. So I'm gonna add in some mountains. And while that seems really big for this scene, uh, what I can do is once again, use those scale handles, kind of squish it, move it down a little bit. There we go. Uh, once again, I don't want my player climbing up that mountain. So that's why I'm kind of squishing it this way. So it's, uh, it's more vertical. You can see it from the side there. It's harder to climb up. Um, and then one thing I really like doing with, actually that material looks really good. Uh, thing that I do like doing with mountains is adding a little bit of, so I actually duplicated that, uh, adding a little bit of snow on top. So I'm just gonna search for snow. It looks like I have a couple different snow materials to choose from. Nice. And so that way you can see one of these mountains objects has the snow material on it. The other just has rock. And then the two combined kind of gives it the sense that, you know, that that uh, mountain has, you know, a lot of snow. And then since I have a, you know, this mountain, I want that to be pretty big. I don't want my mountain to be kind of puny. So I'll stretch that up and make that, you know, a bit taller than my cliff. All right, and then finally, I just want to uh, close, you know, kind of shut the gate on this uh, end of my scene. And to do that, I think I use the saw mountains. So I'm gonna see if I can find, there we go, just another mountain. And this will, like I said, just kind of shut the door on my experience so people can't run off the side, uh, which once again, <laughs> that would not turn out well because they would just kind of fall forever. Uh, you know, I could put like a trigger, which I'll talk about later, um, what we call a trigger field. And that would, you know, give me some options. I could uh, um, program the trigger field to maybe restart the experience uh, if they fell off the edge. Um, but I, you know, I just don't want to you know, make them have to restart. So I'm just gonna not allow them to fall off um, or hopefully I won't. Uh, so there we go. I'll have this mountain. You know what? I'm gonna use the same kind of rock material. So I liked how that looked out over here and let's see how it looks on this mountain. That does look pretty good. I'll uh, maybe make it a little bit more, a little bit different color than that original one. And then I'll do the same kind of snow setup with this mountain that I did over here to uh, give it the feeling that it, you know, you're pretty high up in the elevation and you, you know, maybe have gone out with your family or friends or just by yourself to go hunt for some mushrooms. Uh, I think I used the snow with marks. Oops, that maybe is a little too much snow there. So I'm gonna shrink that down and I don't want quite as much snow present on this one, so I'll just leave that the way it is and call it good. Cool. All right, so now I'm gonna play my viewer again. And well, before I do that, actually, like I said, I was gonna toss some rocks in here, kind of make it look like it's, you know, a little kind of like mountain, mountain pond. And I'll use those rocks Uh, that might be a little too white. There we go. To just make sure that, yeah, you can't really see the edges of my, my pit. And, you know, instead, once again, um, just get a, get a little bit of variation in there. So I'm going to use a different rock and stretch that one across. Now I uh, I generally like you know adding you know a lot of bit of, uh, a lot of detail um, and variation to my scenes. You can actually you know it would probably be much faster if I you know just used the same rocks or you know tried using the same material, and not changing color, that kind of thing. But um, you know what it looks like uh, the visual you know kind of beauty of a scene is important to me as a creator. So I'm I spend perhaps a little more bit more time than the average person, you know, trying to make these little details look good. Uh, but you know, it's everybody's call or anybody's, you know, the creator's call. So if you like, you know, focusing on the programming or the game design aspects more, you can spend your time doing that. I like making sure I have a nice foundation to my scene that I can build on. And 
yeah, that's a pretty good start, like rocks wise. Toss in just a few more along the edge here. Kind of give it a feeling that it's not, you know, just a square pond that I have, you know, uh, yeah, that it feels just a little bit more natural. I'm not sure how many perfectly square ponds I've ever seen in, in real life. So just trying to, yeah, give that a unique, you know, new feeling. Okay, so I'm gonna play my viewer again. And I wanna see, nice, see how my valley is turning out. Perfect. So I like how my pond is looking, you know, it's, uh, it looks pretty natural, doesn't look too square. I could perhaps, you know, fix some of the details along this rock so it doesn't look um, quite as uh, stretched. And I'm gonna see if I can climb up. Uh, no, couldn't really climb that. Yeah, I'm falling down. So I think I did a pretty good job with my walls. I definitely am not gonna try and climb that mountain because that looks very uh, time consuming. So yeah, I think I did, good, did a good job getting, you know, some good detail in there, at least, you know, just very quickly and uh, making sure my player can't jump off my the, oop, the edge of my uh, map. Looks like I had a little gap there and I can just scale that down a little bit to fix that. Okay, so my next step is gonna not be, not quite be adding my mushrooms yet uh, for my game. I'm gonna instead add in some trees. So it's like I said, I'm locating this in uh, kind of like a mountain valley setting. So I'm gonna add in some uh, pine trees, you know, rotate those around a little bit. And I'll do a kind of a forested portion over here. And perhaps, you know, maybe like a couple trees around my, um, around my pond. And then maybe, you know, um, I might leave this area a little bit more, you know, sparse. So the player is not having to look through a whole forest to find those mushrooms. You know, maybe I'll give them one or two that are easy to find. All right, so instead of, uh, you know, just doing that one at a time, I'm going to duplicate a whole bunch of trees at once. You know, change their scale a little bit, change the rotation, select them all again, duplicate and swing them all around. Cool. So that looks like I have a, yeah, a nice little kind of pine forest area over here that I can explore and find some mushrooms. Uh, one of the things that I really wanna add in is a willow tree near my pond. I might actually add a couple of these. Once again, kind of change its you know size a little bit, have some variation. There we go. I might do uh, make that one a little bit smaller. Cool. Yeah, actually I like that spot for it. And I'll rotate that a little bit so I just see a different part of my willow tree than this one over here. And, yeah. You know, I don't, actually, you know, I've seen willow trees kind of have their branches in water before, you know, they kind of, you know, taper off a little bit. Uh, so I've just placed some willow trees and I'm fine with the, the branches going in the water there. If anything, that kind of adds a little bit of realism. And I'm gonna add just a few more trees. Uh, let's see, what are some trees I could find in a mountain? I think I think you can find some birch trees kind of high up in a mountain. And I'll, yeah, I'll add some birch trees just kind of around here. Um, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you uh, are putting trees in a scene is that they do have colliders. Um, and you can actually see that setting right here. Basically, that means that if you try and run into the tree, it will you'll be able to run into it. You know, you can't just run straight through it. So, uh, you know, if I put my mushroom like in this little corner right here, that might be a little hard for my player to get to because the tree could be blocking them. Um, so I just need to make sure that wherever I have those trees, uh, my player can get by and, you know, still find those, those uh, fungi that I want them to find. I don't want to make this, you know, inaccessible to them. So I'll kind of put some of those towards the side. All right, I think my mountain uh, valley is turning out pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna change, 
Yeah, that water, maybe a little, there we go. Too zoomed out. So now it looks like a nice, very peaceful lake um, pond thing where I don't have as much current. You know, with that previous zoom level, I could kind of see a little bit of a current going through there. I think with this one, it looks a little bit more peaceful. And, oops, trying to move my player out of the rock there. And I'll kind of pretend, let's see, I think I'll start my player on this hill instead. So it kind of like maybe they they just climbed, you know, like over this little gap right here, and they've just found a magical, you know, mountain valley that they can explore and uh, go mushroom hunting. So I'm just gonna do one quick test, make sure that loads well. <laughs> wow. I think the scene is looking pretty beautiful, actually. Kind of want to go camping here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it looks great. Okay, so I think now it's time to just uh, add some of those mushrooms in there and um, you know gamify this a little bit. You know, add some of the uh, you know maybe like a variable or two that I can find and um, you know kind of go um, you know count how many mushrooms have actually been found. Uh, I did notice my branches are going to the ground a little bit, so I'm gonna increase the size of my willow tree just a tad. There we go. So yeah, those branches are still hitting the ground, but I think that's okay. All right, so uh, similar to my last uh, stream where I used the pre-made models um, like the fish and the coral uh, around my, my aquarium scene, I'm going to go in my models tab and I've you know talked to some some people and they've shared some some of their mushrooms that they've made. So I have some orange cap mushrooms I can add in. I have some fly agaric uh, mushrooms, shiitake, common, and chanterelle. And that's that you know that gives me five to work with. But I might add you know if I have a little bit of time, I might see if I can add in one or two more mushrooms for my player to find. And once again, these are all just blocksmith shapes. So. And that was made, you know, it looks like with maybe six objects. Yep, right over here you can see six objects total. And, you know, they were just able to assemble those to kind of look like a chanterelle. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find a good hiding spot for my chanterelle mushroom. And I'll, you know, actually, you know what? I'll make this one kind of easy to find for the player. So I'll put it, I'm going to focus on it now. I'll put it you know, near these trees, near the um, starting point, so they can kind of get a sense of what they're doing. And that'll be close to my um, kind of intro text where it shows, you know, this is the instructions for the game. This is, you know, an example of, you know, one of the mushrooms that you can find. So I want to uh, have at least one simple one to find, and then maybe I'll have so the others be a little bit harder. So my chanterelle will be my simple one. And before I move on and add in more mushrooms, since I have designed a few games using Blocksmith before, I'm gonna actually set up that variable counter now. Um, basically, that means that I'm gonna use, I'll pull it out, a variable object. And basically, each time I find a mushroom, I just want to have a simple little program that says, you know, when this mushroom is found, then add one to my variable so my player can see how many mushrooms they have. And I'll put this, I want to put it, you know, somewhere where they can see. So I'll make this area kind of like a little scoreboard against my cliff. And I just want to make sure that's oriented the right direction. Oh, yep. Yeah, so that's why I put in 12 there because that is not, uh, that wasn't rotated the right way. So I'm just going to start out with zero. And then just to make that a little bit more visible, I'll increase its size, to, let's say to be 250. Yeah, it's pretty big. You know, I want them to see that uh, from across the map. So there we go. I have my variable up there. And I don't need that to be that large because I'm only going to, you know, six or five or six mushrooms. And But I like a little bit different font as well. So hmm, let's see what... Actually, I like the luckiest guy. You know, just once again, having some of those customization options I love because you can really give a unique feel. You know, I can change the, the font color of the variable, all that kind of fun stuff. So instead of just having a big zero, 
against my cliff, I want to add some text in here too, which just explains, you know, zero out of what. And for that, I'll just say zero out of, let's see if I can get six mushrooms. And make that pretty big as well. Because right now, you know, you just won't be able to read that text. So uh, I'll save that green. Let's see, there it is. I'm gonna save that green color. Use that same for the same font color for my text. Increase its, I think I did 150. I don't want this to be quite as big, so I'll do 125. Let's see how big that is. That might be too big. Yeah, that's, that's I'll go to 90. That's kind of perfect, because I'm gonna change that to be the luckiest guy font again and move that right up here. You know, actually one, what is that, 90 I put that at? 90 is still almost too big. Yeah, it's kind of getting hid behind, hidden behind my uh, willow tree. So I'm gonna reduce that to, let's say 60. And that's pretty much perfect. So I'm just gonna use snap points and align those very simply and quickly. Cool. So just to make sure that looks okay, I'm gonna play my viewer again. Looks like I have zero out of six mushrooms. That looks good. Cool, so now I can actually program my, now that I have my variable there, I can program my mushroom to basically uh, kind of disappear, you know, like I uh, picked it up. And huh, I could actually enable the inventory on the player, so I am actually picking these up. I'll consider that, but for right now, I think I'm just gonna work on my little program. We might do inventory, uh, player inventory in another future stream, so make sure to check out you know, all our streams in the future. We do these every Tuesday and Thursday, and, uh, or at least we try to, and um, you can always look at the existing videos as well. Okay, so I have my events tab open here and I was actually talking while I said that. So uh, events are basically the, uh, the programs you can apply to you know, various objects, whether it's mushrooms um, or you know, whatever you want. And I'm gonna use a simple interaction event that basically means when I click on this mushroom, I want that to be a little bit bigger. I can't see the little mini one. When I click on this mushroom that I want another object in my scene, I want my score variable. So I'm gonna click on other object and click on my, it just says variable, you know, that's a little vague. Uh, you know, I like trying, trying to make this clear for anybody new who's ever opened up this scene or you maybe, you know, they haven't seen the stream. So I'm gonna put, um, change this to mushrooms found. And that's gonna be my mushrooms found variable. All right, now, like I said, I just want that to be one point. And in this case, let's see. I'll destroy this. Yeah, so you kind of picked it and you know, then it's, then it's gone. So right now, you know, I'll just do plus one to my mushrooms found variable and then have the chanterelle mushroom destroy itself. Now you'll see why I program that before adding any other mushrooms in. And that basically is because, you know, it's gonna be easier to uh, just reuse that program. You can copy and paste those um, event uh, snippets or those pieces of event code um, between objects. So I can just use that exact same event. And you know what, I'll do that right now. So I'll grab my chanterelle and it's this button right here. That basically means I'll copy that event click on my, it's just called the common mushroom. And this allows me to paste that same event. So those two mushrooms uh, will, you know, add, add two points to my mushrooms found variable and then destroy themselves. So you can't, you know, the reason why I'm having them destroy themselves, which sounds maybe a little aggressive, that basically means, you know, I don't want them, you know, one player to go up to one mushroom and just click on it a whole bunch and you know, get their six points just from one. So I'm gonna remove that mushroom from the scene and make it so you've kind of like picked it. Uh, so they, you know, you have to actually find each of the six mushrooms. 
All right, so this one, let's see, I think I'm gonna try and hide over here. I'm gonna focus on that. Remember what I said about, you know, the trees being uh, collidable. So that'll be a little, you know, hard to find, but I don't want my tree to block it, which may be the case. So you know what, in this case, I'm going to uh, make that willow tree uncollidable. So basically I can walk through its branches. Technically I, I could also walk through the trunk of the tree here, but you know, that's, I'll say that's a, a fine um, kind of trade off so I can hide my mushroom in its branches a little bit. And you know what, there are always other options. You know, I could put like some kind of cylinder there that's collidable so like you can walk through the branches, but you know, if you try and walk into the trunk, you'll hit that kind of invisible cylinder there. Um, so there are, you know, many other options to work around that collidable business. All right, so I have two mushrooms in there already. I'm gonna throw some shiitake mushrooms in. I'm just gonna zoom around my scene here a little bit and find a good place for those. You know, I'll do kind of the, <laughs> one of the classic things and I'll hide it maybe where the player won't think to look, which is kind of around the starting point. So I'm gonna move this right above their head. Look, it's grown maybe on the cliff there a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. <laughs> And so they have to, you know, look above them to, or, you know, turn back around to be able to find that, find that one. So I still have that uh, event copied. So I'm going to paste that on there. And since they'll be looking at this rock, you know, you can see that it's a little, uh, the zoom level isn't totally great. So I'm going to decrease the zoom on that and on a couple of these other ones, just to make it look a little bit better. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a good hiding spot for a shiitake mushroom. All right. I'm gonna add in a fly agaric. This one, you know, let's give them a little bit of a challenge. So my fly agaric mushroom, I'm gonna move that over to my forest area. And I just wanna make sure my player can get there again. So yeah, I think if they took this route, they'd be able to get into my forest. And I'll move that, let's see. Once again, I'm gonna decrease, or excuse me, uh, deactivate the collidable thing on my willow tree there so I can walk by it. And I'll put this one up against the cliff over here. So I'm gonna focus on my mushroom and kind of have it grown out of the roots of this pine tree. All right, again, paste that event. And, ooh, you know what? I think I may only have time for five mushrooms uh, I don't want to spend, you know, all day doing the, there we go. So I'm going to just change my uh, instructions to be five mushrooms and then hide my orange cap mushrooms, which are very big in a final spot. Ooh, looks like I'm kind of getting hidden a little bit too. Yeah, so I'll just hide these also in this little foresty area as well. Perfect. All right, so that's five mushrooms. And I can test this out, see if I can click on those mushrooms and get to all of them by playing my viewer. All right, so yeah, I have five mushrooms there. When I click on one, it disappears and my variable counter goes up. Click on another, cool, so that's working well. Let's see, I really like these willow trees and being able to walk through them. That is pretty nice and peaceful. That's the third, four, and <laughs> where did I put the last one? <laughs> I can't even find my own. Uh-oh, I think it, wait, is that all five? Oh yeah, it's the shiitake mushroom. <laughs> ah, yeah, I totally got myself with that. That was pretty bad. Cool, so I found five out of five mushrooms. Uh, one thing that I can do really quick, you know, if my players are kind of having a tough time finding them. I'm gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna use a trigger zone. And I'll put this, I'll put this on by my, forget which one that, my common mushroom over here. And I'm basically, the trigger zone is kind of a special object. It basically just allows you to detect when 
something enters an area. In this case, I want to detect when the player enters. So I'm going to use an event that says um, when it's entered by an object. And I want to say if that object is my player, then I want another object in my scene. And I want this to kind of capture my player's attention a little bit. So I'm going to use an effect. And what's a good effect for this? Let's see. I'm going to use starlight. Um, yeah, we have a ton of effects here. Oh, a shockwave would be a good one. And you can see what those, yeah, so you can see what those look like right there. So I think that's a nice little attention grabbing, you know, not too blatant uh, effect. And basically I'll just say, when this is entered, then I want my effect shockwave to trigger. And that should give them a little bit of a visual indication. So if they get in this area, you know, they'll see kind of that, that shockwave going off there. And I can actually uh, group that together. So I just hit the G key to group. And I'll do that for a couple of my other mushrooms. So where's my shockwave? Just need to make sure it's in the right position. All right. And that will, like I said, just give them a little bit of a hint for perhaps some of those harder ones. But you know what? I am going to leave, just because it's kind of fun, that uh, the shiitake one kind of hidden. Cool. Now I'm going to see if those work. So I'll play the viewer again. I just hit the P key. That's a shortcut. Nice, bright, sunny day and walk close. There it is. So that's how you can get that little hint that my mushroom's there. All right, I'm almost done with this scene, but I want to take a look at what it looks like at different um, you know, times of day. Right now I have a bright sunny day, you know, maybe set during the summer. But let's see what this looks like at different times. So I'm going to find a good place to kind of look at my, my whole valley. It looks pretty good. And see part of the sky too, because I'm going to change some of the sky settings. So right here we have the sky and clouds. So I'm going to see what some different cloud settings look like. Just added, you know, just a couple more clouds in there. Um, let's say it's going to be a little bit heavier. There we go. I actually like that quite a bit. And let's see what this looks like set at a different time of day as well. So I'm going to change this daytime slider. And you can actually watch as the sun moves across the sky as it would if I'm, you know, setting this at different times of day. That looks, ooh, <laughs> it's a little too dark. I kind of like the sunset, but I might do more of a sunrise. Yeah, that is just beautiful. And that will make my game a little bit harder because it's just a bit darker out. And, you know, let's say you woke up first thing in the morning, went out into the mountains, and now you're looking for some mushrooms. I think this is a nice, beautiful scene, something that you might find. Might change that to be a little bit higher so I can get, you know, some of that sun coming over my uh, cliffs there. All right, now I want to show you one of the most powerful features that the Blocksmith XR Builder uh, can do. And that is with a click of a button, I can literally change my whole scene to uh, show how it would appear if I saw this on an Oculus Quest. And then I can change it to another uh, setting to see how it would look like on an Oculus Go. And they have you know slightly different uh, you know kind of device power. You know, one's a bit stronger than the other. And then you know what with my current scene right here, which is set to you know realistic and nice. That's what you'd see with something like a, an Oculus uh, Rift or a Vive. You know, HTC Vive. So I'm going to change this right now to stylized. And this is what you'd see if you uh, put on an Oculus Quest headset and open this scene. So let's see. Nice. So as you can see, it's kind of like all the trees are a little bit more stylized and you know, the shapes are a little bit more, um, you know, maybe a little bit more jagged, you know, not quite as smooth. Let's see how it would look uh, if I played the viewer too. My water changed color there a little bit cause the light coming in from the daytime, actually I think the, yeah, the kind of bright daytime uh, works better for the Oculus Quest. Yeah, so that is how my little peaceful valley would appear if you played this on your Oculus Quest. 
and I can do the exact same thing for an Oculus Go. And we'll change that to a low poly setting or you know, like a cardboard viewer or if you were to get the Blocksmith XR app on your phone, then you could uh, see this, yeah, with the low poly setting. So this is how this would appear on the Oculus Go or on your mobile phone. So I can play that again. And I'll go through those settings one more time just so you can see them. So like I said, just with a click of a button, you can get your scene to you know, look at you know, how it would appear on an Oculus Quest versus Oculus Go versus Oculus Rift or HTC Vive or you know, just desktop. So let's go back to stylized. I'm gonna change around my daytime settings a little bit more. That looks pretty nice actually pretty peaceful. And I could spend some more time, you know, trying to add in, you know, some sound effects, maybe some birds singing. Um, but this is also going to be visible up on the Blocksmith uh, homepage. So you can just explore the creations and this one will be up there. So you can take a look at it on your own time. And maybe you can, you know, try and recreate this one or take your own, uh, you know, idea on what this challenge would look like. Maybe you want to set this in a different location. Uh, maybe you want to do a fungi hunt on another planet. Maybe you want to look for alien fungi. You know, that's that's all up to you. That would be um, kind of a fun challenge, actually. I <laughs> wish I had done an alien planet fungi hunt now. Uh, so yeah, that is the uh, fungi hunt challenge with that I completed with the Blocksmith XR Builder. You can download that for free at blocksmithxr.com. You just need to sign up for an account and you can take on these challenges yourself. So I'll save this right now and actually capture a nice little screenshot of my valley. And you know, let's try and get the little <laughs> shiitake mushroom in there. I think that's kind of fun. I'll save this, let's call this uh, mushroom hunt challenge. Uh, yeah, and I'll put in my description the link to my streaming video and everything later on. So I'm gonna save this and publish it view only so everybody can check this out and explore it on your own. All right, now on Thursday, please join us again for the, I think the next challenge is pizza versus tacos. And I think that will be a perfect one to explore some of the kind of deeper programming or game making aspects of the Blocksmith XR Builder. So once again, join us uh, on Thursday for that challenge. And until then, stay safe and uh, we'll see you next time.